Hello, this is the section Initializing Data Systems with Products, Cloud SQL Part 2. Um, if you recall from the last part of Cloud SQL, we um, did not use any secure um, SSL or TLS certificates. So, you know, when we were accessing our database, um, we were at risk of people being able to inter intercept that traffic. So it turns out that you can actually um, enable SSL TLS, and by doing so, um, and you can force it that, that you can only connect that way. And, and the idea there is now, um, unless you have the keys on either, you know, to intercept the traffic, you're not going to be able to. You get the traffic, you're not going to be able to do anything with it. So um, the way, well, you know. There's some details about how to do it, so we'll just do it by example, I think is the easiest way. And I'll talk about the various pieces of it as we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and create another database. Uh, in this case, database 2. So let me go back to Cloud Pub Sub. Uh, no, not Cloud Pub Sub, SQL. And I'm going to create another instance of type Postgres. I'm going to call it DB2. Now, one thing I did learn, you cannot reuse. Um, if I try to use DB1, oh no, I think it was my DB, right? If I try to use this, it will not work because you can't reuse the same name um, within 30 days, apparently. So even though it doesn't exist, there's a 30 day window where you can't use it. So this is going to be my DB2. And the password, I'll do the same as what I've been doing, which is. Uh, Can't tell if I typed it right. Okay, we had D. Okay, so Postgres 13. I'm gonna just do a single zone to keep it simple. And under customization, um, we're gonna continue to use public IP. But one thing I noticed here, there's no flag here for being able to, to uh, like there's no security tab, as far as I can tell, that lets me set uh, that you required um, SSL TLS. So I'm going to first just create the con instance and then when we go to go edit it, we will we'll be able to see the ability to set that setting. So it looks like, again, when you create it, you can't apply that requirement to use SSL TLS only while you're editing it. So I'm going to pause the video until this is created and we'll look to see about that change. Okay, the database has been created. Um, so it looks like the way you change the setting for um, you know, requiring SSL TLS is if you go under, so where is it at? Under connections? Yeah, so under connections here, once you have an instance, there's a, there's a flag right here called only allow certificates, SSL connections. So you check that box and then um, you have to wait for this. Actually, yeah, it's actually ready to go. Okay, so the next step you can do is, um, oh, I, mean, I gotta pause the video. It's still like saving the setting. So let me pause the video yet again. Okay, I'm back. It just took a second, actually. Okay, so now that I've got SSL connections enabled, I can now create... Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a client certificate. So I'll just click this button first, and I'll talk about the various certificates because it's a little confusing. So, okay, so when you do this, you're going to get three different certificates that you have to deal with. Um, so first of all, you need, right, so there's a client key, okay? So that is, that's going to basically allow your client, your like your PSQL client locally, to be able to encrypt traffic to the server. The client, client cert is essentially what allows your client to authorize to the server. So it's basically the server checks the cert to make sure that you're allowed to connect, right? And then the last one is the server CA is essentially that allows you, the client, to recognize the server as a valid endpoint. 
So you actually need all three of these to establish a secure connection to the server. So I need to download this one, this one, and this one. Okay. Okay, so now I need to copy those files somewhere. Um, okay, so if I can get this right. Let me pause the video. I need to get these files out of my browser into a folder, and then I don't want all these ones on them. So I'm going to pause the video and get them to a folder that we can work with, and I don't want to drag you through it. So let me pause the video. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so I took those files, and they're now sitting on my desktop. So you can see um, they're right here. Got my server, CA, and my client cert, and my client key. Okay, and then I need to do, I want to connect from my machine. So, uh, okay, a couple, actually there's a couple things just about these certificates in general. Um, so first of all, the server certificate lasts 10 years, right? And at, if it starts to expire, you'll get an email saying, by the way, that server certificate is, needs to be expired. And there's a process by which you can sort of, you know, without disrupting operations, basically swap out that certificate on, on the server and then get your clients updated and it's all good. Okay. Um, other hand, the client certificate we created also is only good for 10 years. But that one, you will not get um, any email saying that, um, that it's expiring. And you just got to basically stop the client, generate a new client file, uh, certificate, and then um, start it back up. So that one, and, and then the another 10 here is that you can actually have 10 different client certificates um, simultaneously for that server. So uh, lots of 10s. Um, and then, okay, so the next thing you want to do is you want to be able to use those files to connect. But if you recall, before we connect, we have to have an authorized network. So we have to go through that rigmarole of... See if I can figure this out. I need to go into um, overview, edit, and I need to go under connections. I need to add a network, laptop. I need to figure out what my IP address is. What is my IP address? It's this, probably the same one that was earlier. And I need to paste that here. I need to hit done, I need to hit save. Okay, so then that takes a few minutes. Let me pause the video again while this saves. Okay, we're back. Okay, so I've got my network access now for my public IP for my laptop. And if I did this right, I should be able to, um, I need the IP address. So here, this is the command I need to run. Now, to be honest, I haven't tried this yet. This is the first time I will have tried it. I don't know. This looks ambitious. Looks like I have to get this IP address changed. So I'll need to queue this up. Okay. On my desktop, ls. Paste. Okay, so I got PSQL, verify CA, SL, the root is the SSL root cert, and that's server CA PEM, that's right, SSL cert, client cert, yeah, that looks good, SSL key is key PEM, okay, the address needs to be changed. I don't know, I think I got a 50 50 chance this will be right. Okay, so now I need to get the IP address, which is right here. Need to edit, paste. And if it works, of course not. Oh, okay, so I need to change the permissions of my key. Come on, 600 client. Key.pem. Okay, let's see if this works. Hey, that looks good. Um, I 
Uh, I think I just I may have typed my password in wrong. Ah, uh, that's good. Hey, I'm in. Okay, so you can see I got in, and then just for illustration purposes, um, so your old way of connecting was PSQL host um, is this. I'm just illustrating that this won't work. Then user post. Progress. Okay, and then you can see um, SSL. Yes, yeah, so it's got a problem with SSL. So, so our required SSL is working, and when we use the keys right, we do actually connect. Okay, um, I want to pause the video while I regroup because we're going to switch to private IP next. But I need to take a break for a second. Okay, I'm back. So, so far we've been using public IPs, um, which means, you know, anybody on the internet, as long as you have, you know, enabled that network authorization um, or authorized networks, you can get in. But, you know, it's actually even better to just not even expose your database to the public internet. And what we can do is we can convert the, just basically use an, a private IP address instead of a public IP address. And I think we can change our existing database. So we'll go through the exercise of trying to do that. So if I go to edit, um, now, where's this at? Connections, where's connections? There it is. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to enable private IP. Now, what's a little bit um, special about that, we haven't talked about a lot of the, the networking. That's another section. But for the most part, when we've been running our EC, uh, not EC2, our GCE instances, um, they've been running with um, private IPs. We'll get, and, we, and, and they also actually have, also have public IPs. But um, the idea generally is these, uh, these SQL instances are not in our project, which means they're not by default in our network because they're, they're, they're Google instances that live in their network. And so um, when you use private IP here, you have to somehow bridge, and, and this will make more sense probably later, but I'll try to cover it a little bit here. What we need to somehow do is make, uh, when we put this VPC, this instance of Cloud SQL in their net, VPC network, their network, Google's network, we somehow need to make our network aware of it. And there's a kind of a wizard that's gonna make allow us to do that, and we'll kind of like look at it a little bit. So I'm gonna click on private, and I'm gonna tell it it's in my default network, which is the only network we have. And you can see it pops up with this warning, private service connection required. This is basically our default network does not basically know about Google's network, where our instance will be. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use their wizard to set up this connection. Okay, so uh, again, I don't want to go through all the detail, but I guess the first thing we need to do is we need to enable that API. And I probably need to pause the video. Pause. No, I didn't have to do that. Okay, so next thing you need to do is you need to allocate a block of addresses that your, um, for this private IP address in Google's network. And I'm just going to have Google automatically pick it for me. Okay, and then and, and that network address needs to not collide with any of the networks that I have in my networks. That's what makes it a little bit confusing. And then I say create connection. Now this may take a minute, so I'm going to pause the video until this is done. Okay, it looks like that finished. Okay, so let me get rid of this. Okay, so now I don't want... Okay, so I'm trying to use... I don't want to use public IPs anymore, so let me clean up here. I don't really want, oops, I don't need my laptop anymore because I'm not going to be connecting that way. And I don't even want public IP at all turned on. So I basically only want to use a private IP address instead. So should now, I should hit save. And of course that now will take another few minutes. So let me pause the video yet again. 
Okay, we're back. It took a while for that change in IP address to happen, but now I can see that I have a private IP address and not a public IP address. And then I'm going to make note of this. One thing that's interesting, if you look at this 10.7.240.3, so this IP address actually lives in um, Google's networking, not my networking. Now again, we haven't spent much time looking at a networking, but I'm going to glance at it for a second here. Um, if we go down to VPC network, what it did underneath the hood, hood here is it enabled this VPC peering. And if you look carefully at this, if I can look at it, right here it is. So what it did was it took basically a block of addresses. I think this is like 255 or 254 addresses, right? that actually lives in Google, and it says, hey, these are routes, this is a network that I should know about, basically. And that allows um, now my instances that are in my networks, right, to be able to talk to anything that's in that network, and that 107240 happened to be where that database was. And then it turns around, FYI, it also exports, and all these networks here are basically networks that are in my project. And so that means any, any traffic that needs to go from that database back can get to any of any of my VC, you know, anything, any resources in my networks. For example, my GCE instances. So, um, and this may, not, may or may not make a lot of sense, but long story short, in order to get private IP address working, we had to get this service networking thing working where it allows basically Google networks to be visible by our GCE instances in particular. Okay, so to illustrate this all working, I can't do this from my machine anymore because my machine is not on the private network that Google has, right? Um, so I'm gonna have to use a VM, right? Which I don't think I have one running. So we're going to go through an exercise of creating an instance here. And I don't think I need to do anything here other than just say, um, yeah, I don't think I need to do anything special. I just need to create it. Okay. This will take a few minutes. Um, now, I guess one last thing before I forget. Remember before when we were in our, um, we were trying to grant access to our laptop to, uh, to be able to connect to the database, we had to go in and authorize that network, right? That's only relevant for public IPs. Any private IP address, like the 10 addresses we'll be using for our VPCs, those are always allowed through. So we will not have to go through that rigmarole of um, authorizing the network for this. In, in this case, the IP address of my um, instance here is 10.128. 0 0.33. So we, let's see if we can get this to work. This is a little bit winging it. I have not actually got through this exercise. So the first thing we need to do once we connect is we need to get hmm, a number of things actually. Okay, so first thing we need to do is install the Postgres client and of course, I don't know off the top of my head. I think I had a link in the last video of how to install that. So let me go back to the course. Boy, this is going to be kind of wild here. Okay, well, we'll just do it. I'm going to go to part one. And I'm going to remind myself how to install. Of course, now I can't find it. How to install it here. Here it is. And I'm on Debian, so I need to do app get update. It's Postgres client. Okay, this is what I was trying to remember right here. Okay, so I'm gonna do apt, I'm gonna do sudo, I'm gonna become super user, apt update. Oops. <sighs> Clear, and then I'm gonna do apt, get rid of this thing apt um, apt 
install Postgres client. Yes. Let that install. Okay. Exit. Okay, so now I'm there. Now, unfortunately, I have those key files that I need because they're sitting on my desktop. Of course they are. So I need to copy. Um, I'm going to pause the video while I try to figure out how to copy those files easily onto my um, EC2 instance. So let me pause the video for a second. So, okay, <clears throat> I had to dig back into the, some old uh, documentation I had done in the earlier video where I had actually had created keys for my laptop to um, be able to upload, um, basically not upload, so log in with a secure shell from my la laptop. So I actually had done that before, I just forgot about it. So what I'm gonna do here is, so I can do, for example, um, let's see, I can actually use secure shell directly, right? And I can log into instance here, so I'm logged in. That also then means I can run commands like secure copy. So I can clear, secure copy the client cert there. And I need to do the same thing for all three files. So client key, a little bit tedious, and error. I'll see if I get this all right. So I'm copying the three files, and then I need the server CA. Okay, so with those three files now on the server, um, now I have to go to log in. There's the three files. I think I have to do change mod 600. Um, there's the key. And then I got to remember the command to use. So let's go now. See, so yeah, I have to remember the IP address. Oof. All I can do is I have a history here. History, rep, P, S, Q, L. Uh, oh, I'm, that's the wrong machine. Okay, hang on. Boy, I'm all over the place. Okay, so I want to do history, rep, P, S, Q, L. This should be the full command right here, the one that worked, right? So I copy this. I log back into the instance. Three files are here, and if this works, oh, except for now I have to use a private IP address, which is not that address, darn it. So, I have to remember what the private IP address now is of this. So they go here, back under SQL. There's the private IP address, and if this works, I'll be amazed. Okay. Ah, that's not bad. Database. Uh, hey, it worked. Okay, so what did we just do? Um, this reminds okay, so walk through what we did. We converted the uh, database to be only have a pop private IP address. Because of the private IP address, we don't have to do the, any of that network authorization business um, because private IP addresses are always allowed to the instance. Spun up an EC2 instance that I reminded myself I can actually directly secure shell in from my laptop. That allowed me to secure copy the three files I needed to the, uh, to the, East, the uh, GCE instance. And then I was able to use the command as before where I would connect up using secure shell mode, SSL mode, and supply the three files to connect to the database. I type in the database password, and I'm in, and I can do things with the database. So that was illustrating now where I've got a 
fairly secure setup, right? My, my database is only available in um, as a private IP address. And two, it's only accessible using SSL's TLS. Okay, so I think that's it for this somewhat chaotic video.